So the Scottish Owl Centre is a large collection of owls. Um, we are the largest collection of owls in the world on view to the public. People can come and look round at the owls. We have flying displays every day um, in our large indoor flying arena. Plenty of educational features, so we aim at environmental education and entertainment. The, the flying displays are very entertaining. It's suitable for families, all ages, from young children who can benefit a lot from seeing the, the beautiful owls to those more interested in the research and conservation. At the moment we've probably got around about 160 um, individual birds, uh, 50 different types of owl. So we have all five British species, so the, uh, the tawny owl, the, the barn owl, uh, long-eared owl, short-eared owl and little owl. But we also have owls from other habitats and climates around the world. So owls from rainforests, owls from the, uh, the desert, so our pharaoh eagle owls, but of course we also have the snowy owls too. So they are each housed in different aviaries that are tailored to the species that are resident to those spaces. So when we're building our aviaries, we do most of our building in-house. So it's done by staff members such as ourselves and our volunteer team. And we have to think about the natural habitat that these owls would be found in. So for some of them, they would need lots and lots of options for perching that would simulate a more wooded environment. And they tend to be more manoeuvrable. So they would have ease of movement, even with a lot of perching going on within the aviaries. For the bigger birds, things like your eagle owls, you really need to think about giving them clear flight paths because we have to think of a space that is big enough to give them a good exercise space, but a space that isn't too big. There's such a thing as a space that can be too big, which sounds bizarre when you think about it, because people think about birds soaring around free in the sky with no boundaries containing them. The owls are all carnivorous, of course. They're, they're all predators that eat other animals. So we need to give them a meat diet. So here they get uh, a diet of, uh, of chicken, of mice, of rats, and sometimes rabbits as well, depending on the size of the owl, of course. And we feed them every day. Caring for the owls, strangely enough, is very simple at its base level. They need a safe, sheltered place to call home, effectively. So most of our owls throughout the AVs, with just a couple of exceptions, like the marsh owl or the short-eared, who make use of natural shelters in long grass on the floor of their aviary. They have roost boxes to provide them with shelter from the rain or if they need a shady place from the sunshine. When it comes to general care for them, it's basically just making sure they're well fed. That is all they're really thinking about. They're thinking with their stomach like every other animal, bird, reptile, whatever, alive on our planet. So their main concern is that they've got plenty of food available to them every single day. Uh, we do regular health checks through the year to make sure that they're, they're, they're keeping uh, healthy. Um, we have regular visits from the vet that will check around the, the, the facility, make sure it's okay. And this is also part of the, the zoo licensing. So we get regularly um, checked up and inspected by professional inspectors to make sure we're, we're keeping the best quality of life, the best standards for our, our birds here as well. So the, uh, the Owl Centre offers quite a lot to various different people. We obviously were open daily for the public, general public to come and visit. Um, when they're here, they'll see a flying display or two or uh, in the summer we do two flying displays as well as a static meet the birds talk. Says twit -twoot. You know what? Only one owl in the world says twit -twoot. Out of We like to interact with the public, answer any questions, point out little things, but we also have our educational features in our flying displays as well, our talks. People can see the birds in action and hear a little bit about how they would live in the wild, what threats there might be, and how people could help. We also um, offer private experiences uh, with owl handling. It's called owl encounters, so people can book an owl encounter and they get to hold and fly three or four owls. We have half hour or one hour sessions. And then we welcome schools. Schools can come and visit us or we can take owls to schools. When the schools come here, we do a special little presentation just 
for the school called Hoots for Dinner, which is all about owl diet. So we have, we have a bucket full of pretend owl food and it's like a lucky dip. The children come one at a time to take something out of the bucket and decide uh, which of two owls. We, we have two owls, like an insect eating owl, a smaller owl and a, a barn owl or a tawny owl. And they have to decide which dinner plate to put the food on. So that's why it's called Hoots for Dinner. And so that, that's about owl diet and, um, and also environmental issues about pesticides and rodenticides and things that are not good for owls and how we can help um, the environment. The idea for the Scottish Owl Centre came into being through the initial study that we carried out in our old home in Kintyre. And in 1995, the, the British Trust for Ornithology launched a nationwide survey to see how many barn owls there were all over the country to try and understand the, whether the owl numbers had risen or fallen since previous census. To our amazement, within, within a short while, we realised there was quite a decent barn owl population in Kintyre. And in the course of those three years, we found 40 different territories, uh, barn owl territories in Kintyre. So the, 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 the work we did on the barn owl in Kintyre was the initial impetus that, to specialise in owls. And then as our children grew, we had family holidays in the north of England and we went to various one or two owl centres, including one very small and, and, and also very large owl centres. And it gradually came to our attention that I said to my wife, I said, I think that's something we can do. But I was asked this question a few years ago, why we started the Owl Centre and why, environmental ed why education with owls is important. And I gave the answers about conservation and all this, and I thought, now, what, now step, take a step back, Rod. Why, why, why do you do this? I said, the real reason is because it gives joy to people. People get a lot of joy through seeing owls. They have a lot of joy through experiencing an owl, even in captivity seeing the flying displays, learning about owls. It gives people a lot of joy and a lot of reasons to feel good about living in this world. So the Owl Centre have given me opportunities that I would never have dreamt that I would have been able to have in my life. I've been very interested in owls from a very young age. I started volunteering just under six years ago now. Um, very quickly built up to working here about between 30 and 35 hours a week. So the opportunities they gave me in teaching me about owls, teaching me to handle owls, teaching me about their welfare, their care needs, how to look after them. But most importantly, they gave me the opportunity to have something that I never thought I would be able to have in my life, and that was to own my own owl. So that's Tehuti here, my Faro Eagle Owl. Arrangement was made with the centre that they would teach me how to look after them. I bought Tehuti and she came here and joined the flying display team and she's become a very important part of my life since then as the centre itself has done. The, the centre is an amazing place. It means everything to me. I do two days a week volunteering. I've got the time. Um, I re retired five years ago, so something to do with my time. And I thought I would come up here and, and help look after the owls, clean out the aviaries, build next boxes, anything that needs done really. You're never going to feel bored in a job like this. It is physically impossible too, because every day is different for whatever subtle reason. You can know a bird inside and out as well as you possibly can, because you've worked with them every single day since you started, but they can still surprise you at the end of it. And that's what I love so much about these owls, because they have their own characters, their own personalities, Every single one of them exhibits that right at their very core. And getting to know them, getting to unravel the mystery that normally enshrouds owls, not getting to see them up close in the wild, for me, that is the best part of the job. It is building that bond with these amazing birds, that bond of mutual trust and respect. Well, I, I love owls, and my interest in owls is only getting stronger each year so the ability to work with owls every day um, being so close to them is, is a real privilege. I am an ornithologist it's integral to my life so being a bird person this is a wonderful way to express something that's been a natural part of my life since I've been a boy to actually express that interest to other people through the medium of owls and it's also the result of the harmony, the synergy in our marriage between the different gifts and we have that have come together 
to express the Owls Centre and our children as well. They were involved in its early stages and took part and helped the training of the Owls and came to various shows we went to. So it's very much a family, something that's come out of the family as a unit. And now it's gone to the staff and everything at the Owls Centre is really an expression that's come out of our, our family relationships, I think. Enjoy the rest of your visit to the centre. So you're going to say thank you to everyone? Maybe. How about we do a bow? You ready? Remember, three, two, one. There we go. Thank you very much.